Okay everyone, today I'm going to be showing you a chemical stoplight experiment. Now in this experiment we're going to be seeing a battle between oxygen and glucose. Oxygen will turn it green, glucose will turn it yellow, with an intermediate being red. We have a yellow liquid, but now let's turn it red. <laughs> Now let's make it green. There we go. <laughs> That's awesome. So right now the reaction is staying yellow because it's losing the battle with the oxygen in the air. But what if we could add a little bit more oxygen to the air? Well, let's see what happens when we flow some pure oxygen near it. Quickly turns red. And then green. That is so cool. So notice how much longer it's staying green now when I actually bubbled oxygen through it. When I just shook it, it didn't stay green for that long. But look how long it's staying green now. So let's see if we can win the battle a little bit easier We're in these two competing reactions. So it's glucose versus oxygen. Let's add some more glucose. Okay, let's see how fast this goes now. Here we go. Put the oxygen in. Red. Green. <laughs> That's awesome. Then let's take the oxygen out and let's see what happens. And back to red. And then back to yellow. So in order to make this solution, it's pretty easy. All we do is add around five grams of sodium hydroxide to 250 milliliters of water. And then add in around five to 10 grams of glucose. And the glucose can vary, it's just gonna change the speed of the reaction. And then you just add around two to three milliliters of indigo carmine. Now indigo carmine is a redox indicator. But it can also be used to make a really cool color experiment like this. Now when indigo carmine is fully oxidized, it's going to be green. But when it's fully reduced, it's going to be yellow. And then there's an intermediate stage where it's going to be red. Now the way this is working is when it's in this yellow state, that means that the indigo carmine is absorbing all of the blue light. That's because the molecule's completely reduced so it can absorb the shorter wavelength light. And then as we give it a little bit more oxygen, now it's absorbing the green and the blue light. And so it's producing red light. And if we give it even more, when it's completely reacted, now it's absorbing red and blue light. So when it's completely oxidized, it can absorb all of the red wavelengths of light, the longer wavelengths. Now when it's going through these reactions, it's changing the number of double bond spacing in the molecule. And the number of double bonds in a carbon chain determines the color of that molecule in a lot of cases. It changes the wavelength of light that it can absorb. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing and you can hit the bell so that you can be notified when my latest videos out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.